I want to I want to start by talking about the case study. We're just about to put out a case study. Maybe when this comes out, the case study will be out uh, that Nick Nick produced uh, for us. That was basically around a brand called Pup Socks that allow you basically it's it's a case study where you show you scaled to four x return on ad spend on a million dollar spend three point eight across one point five million. Just ridiculous numbers. And I just was reading in the in the case study just now. Did they come to you with this request that they wanted four x ad spend? Yes, actually did. So that's crazy. The, the backstory is like Zach Zellner, their their founder and entrepreneur, had this fantastic idea, and he already had an account kind of going, like doing some boosted posts. And I've talked about this before, but he basically said, "Success to me is four x at a million dollar spend." And we all looked at each other internal. Like I know Taylor, our founder, was with me. He's like, "Can you do this?" I was like, "Of course I can do this. Let me let me get let me get my swing at it. Let me get my team at it." <laughs> but realistically, that's probably the the stupidest promise I've ever made in my life because it did a lot of things. One, it I lost all my sleep over Q4, right? It was within a month period of time. But spending that tremendous amount of dollars on unproven accounts, on unproven creative, like you had an idea like, okay, this looks good, as you'll see in the, the case study, why it worked, the main reasons why. But if we weren't pulling the right levers as we needed to, to like the tactics all the way to get to that much spend, not even let alone the return, just to get to that much money is insane. It's, it just it shows you that like it, like the fact that he came in with this ex- set an expectation is gonna you shouldn't let your other clients hear this by the way to be like oh I would just be like well get Shaq to do eight eight times ROI oh we get that talk to like well they did this I'm like okay let me explain how we did this and why we did this the right time and then all of us it's just good planning that's really what it comes down to we did we had a really good planning my team was on point and it was good execution all the way around really. The, the thing that, you know, we're you, you, in this space, this education space, there's a lot of people out there who sell systems and sell blueprints and sell, this is your step-by-step s- system for dropshipping success, all that stuff. We've never gone that way. We've always been a sort of skills-based team. All we, we've sort of always been trying to let people know about the realism of how this stuff actually gets done. And and then reading your case study, it was like, it's it's sexy because it's, it's an amazing story, but it just, it comes down to mass systematic testing, right? Yep. It comes down to like testing yep. in a really systematic way. And just like hammering it, sort of. System. I was amazed at the the systems that you put in place to to be able to to, to check your, your your the lift that you're going to get over the course of a 28 day attribution window, oh. so that you could then spend reliably, knowing that a lot more was going to trickle in. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, you don't. It's it's hard to really get this much data to understand what that lift will be 20 days later, because we as media buyers look at a day to day basis, day to day basis, and we don't even think about how much you can actually spend. Because if you're not thinking about where you can spend 28 days, then you're making premature decisions, right? That's just what it comes down to. And you could be allowing yourself to try. There's a plan. Yeah. LAX. LAX, baby. I know, right here. Um, so what, what I meant to say is if you're, you're making premature, premature decisions and you don't understand what the lift you're going to get after a full default 28-day last uh, 20 day youth, you're, lit, you're leaving – you're taking dollars off the table, essentially, right? Because you could be spending more knowing that you can cut a little later at your metric, your whatever your success metric is, because you know you're going to get that back in 28 days. Nice. And you actually link in this case study to a spreadsheet that other people can can model and use themselves. Oh, yeah. There's an easy way of determining like what your like repurchase rate is and what your lift is going to be. And I actually walked through it a couple of times in, in, uh, in the more of the course, but yes. Very cool. Uh, yeah, so so let's talk a little bit of that. We're releasing this case study. On top of that, we have dubbed you an e-commerce all-star. You're one of our six all-stars. Uh, and you're handling um, Facebook ads uh, from, a, from, from a, a testing and scaling perspective. I know that's in there. But also from a, a, a bringing customers back in perspective, from a remarketing, um, from, a, 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 from a retention and frequency standpoint. So let's talk a little bit about that. What's we can out it here. What's your magic tool to, to, to help you understand when to hit people up, how often, and et cetera? Oh, for sure. So magic tool is understanding your repurchase rate. Like at its core is what is your repurchase rate? How many between a period of time for you choose, three months, six months, a year, how often is that original purchase coming back, original purchaser coming back and spending with you? Because the tool that we use to kind of automate it, because I do show how to do it manually, but I then go, well, why would you waste your time if you could do it already with a tool? And that tool is Glue. So Glue is 
this magical gift that they've given us to determine how often someone's going to buy, at what point are they going to fall off, and then what kind of message should you be communicating with them? Because if you have, if you have one consumer only spending a certain amount of dollars with you, they need to be treated versus someone who spent hundreds of thousands of dollars with you, right? That's the biggest takeaway is using this tool to its best ability and building specific communication funnels. And, and I think it's one of those things too. It's like it's not immediately obvious. I know they have some presets within there about how to pull certain kinds of data sets out. Essentially, it combines your Shopify data with your Facebook ads data and allows you to create right. really smart segments essentially. But having someone guide people through actually how to do this for their business, giving them exact concrete examples, this is the kind of thing you should be pulling out, this is the kind of thing you should be pulling out, I think will be really helpful for people. For sure, because I think it's, you have the tool, but then you have the platform, not just a the platform, then you have the, the creative, right? So it's all three of those elements of understanding, okay, here's how, how do I use this? Like what aspect, where do I put this? What's the communication language around this type of customer? And pulling a couple of examples really gets the ball rolling because what I'm not trying to do is show you the blueprint, right? Like what you said, but I'm trying to show you the framework of thought so that you can apply it to what your brand is. You have different brands. I have different margins. I have 17 brands I need to do this for. And as long as you have the thought work through it, you can pop up as many brands as you want. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to ask you about the brands that you guys work with. You know, if, if someone comes in and they're just like a dog of a brand, not a pup socks, but like a brand, like how do you know when, like when you're going to take a client on? Like what gets you excited about, about a client specifically? Okay, great question. So this is actually a question I get asked a lot from a lot of 